Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. Thank you so much for being with me today. This is our final project um, video on our Tangled Ribbon Flower project. And we are going to be adding some embellishing around the edges of this. And uh, uh, what I've decided to do is use the Tangle. Basically, it's any shoe with a, with a bit of um, variation just to make it work for what I'm doing. So um, in any shoe, basically what you do is you draw one of these sort of pointed leaf shapes it's sort of an oval with points on each end. Um, and then you fill it with vertical lines. Now, in this project, I'm going to be doing a lot of overlapping. And overlapping is something that you want uh, with a tangle like any shoe. And um, so I'm putting in my vertical lines here. And you want to have some curve with them you want each one of these to be very dynamic. And uh, I think you will, I think you will appreciate the, the end result. Now this tangle is very much like uh, the tangle we did African artist. It is also very similar in some ways to the tangled garlic cloves. And um, so one of the things that I love about those tangles is that they are able to be very dynamic whether the lines are perfect or not. And so that makes it very forgiving. This is also very forgiving shape-wise. You know, if your shape is wonky, then, you know, you're going to be able to work with it. Now, what I'm using today is a light, cool gray gel pen to draw this in. I wanted something that would not battle the foreground, which means the flower. I didn't want my background uh, to battle the foreground as far as interest goes. And so I want something back here that's going to be extremely subtle. And this one is going to be great. It's going to give, uh, it's an organic pattern, so it's going to match uh, in um, sort of the feel is going to match our flower. And uh, you can really form these lines in the middle as you will. I tend to draw my center line and decide how I'm going to want to curve that particular one. And then I just sort of go with it. Now, if you're going to use these light gray pens, um, if you don't have a light gray pen, uh, my next choice I think would be to use, um, to use the um, brown pen, the brown 01 to draw this in. I think that would be the least amount of competition uh, for the foreground. And then the way that we are going to shade these is going to be, of course, with colored pencils. Uh, we'll do some shading and contouring with these and it's going to look amazing. At least I hope so. <laughs> that is always my hope, as we know. Now, if you're using one of these gel pens, um, make sure that your nib stays pretty clean. And if you need some more uh, definition in any area, in any area, then go ahead and go go back through and over it. And the more that you place in there, the darker your shade will be. Okay. So you just fit these little pointed leaf shapes in as you go. Feel free to have them overlap, draw them behind as we do in Halaba. That is the Zentangle original pattern Halaba. I will try to put a screen, a, a um, title up and tell you how that is spelled. I know I have a lot of beginners, and if you are a beginner, I'm really proud of you for doing this project with me. Uh, it, it has been... Um, intermediate to hard uh, level wise. And so I'm really proud of those of you who have done this with me. It's not that it's really difficult. It's just um, very, it's very intensive. And uh, this video is mostly time lapsed. And uh, I think um, I'm going to try to do this one section real time and then I will time lapse the rest of it simply because this was four plus hours 
of uh, video. This was a very long drawn out process drawing in all of these little any shoes all the way around. This is a large uh, piece of work that I'm working on. I don't know how you guys are working but this is a ten and a half by ten and a half inch piece of paper gorgeous paper that I'm working on. It is a Zentangle Opus tile and uh, I am using Prismacolor Verithins to color this. Uh, this one is a true green and what I'm doing is I'm going in as we have been as we tangled each individual ribbon uh, I am contouring these with colored pencil and letting the background dictate which colors that I use and that is what we've done on each individual petal and it's going to work beautifully here as well let the background sort of dictate the color scheme and then we're gonna have something really cool and dynamic and living when we finish this. Now this is the light cerulean blue. This is the least favorite of my color choices, not because I don't like this color, but because it's so light that I'm not able to get a good dynamic blue out of it. And so, you know, if I had um, a true, what is what do they call in Prismacolor the true blue? Is it called true blue? Uh, I don't remember, but there is there is a basic blue in Prismacolor. There are also several other um, colors that I can use. I'm steering away from the aquamarine here and trying to just stick with the blue, green, and purple as we did in the background. Just a minute. All right, here we go. So again, I'm just letting the background dictate the color scheme that I use. And this is Parma Violet. And as I color, what I'm doing is I'm putting intense color on the base and the tip of each one where the lines are converging. Yes. And then uh, to one side, I'm going to put um, a sort of a stronger, darker color. Remember, these Verithins are blendable with your uh, Tortillon or your paper stump, as in this case. Uh, I like the paper stump for blending colored pencil because it uh, really grabs the pigment a little bit better than the Tortillons. And uh, it can rub a little bit more uh, strongly. And this paper does a pretty good job taking it. Now I am starting to lose uh, some of the tooth in, in spots, so I do want to be careful. But let me back out here and uh, let's look at this overall. <clears throat> See, I think that's going to be lovely. And so I think that's what I'm going to do on the rest of this. Now here, this is a peacock blue, which is going to work well for the transition between green and blue. And it's a darker color, so I am going to use this for some contouring. I'm going to emphasize the shapes of these. I'm going to emphasize their sides so that it's so that it's clear that we've got a mishmash of things going on. And I'm also going to add a little bit of a, a deeper shadow to one side of these. This will this will draw out the individuality of the elements. and really make this more a part of uh, the composition. Now, if you're using a brown colored uh, brown uh, micron to draw these in, uh, that might be a completely different look. And so uh, I'd be interested to see that if uh, you have chosen to do it in brown or needed to do it in brown. I saw in comments someone said that um, they were feeling guilty about spending money on ink tints, uh, Derwent ink tints pencils, uh, because they had such a collection of colored pencils. And um, I think I would like to respond to that by saying there is no comparison as far as I'm concerned um, for vibrancy of color and um, effectiveness than Derwent ink tints. And so, now I'm trying something here. I'm using my Koi coloring brush in gray to add a shadow across here to show that this is on top of the background. And 
and this is my uh, Tombow marker blender. And I'm just trying to draw that out and soften it a little bit. But already I have raised the tooth of the paper here. And so when the little balls start coming off, that's when you know you've gone too far and you need to back off of that area. And so at this point, I'm going to be um, speed, speed drawing. Now you guys know that the actual drawing is done very slowly and very meticulously, right? This is six times speed. And so I don't want anybody trying to draw this fast because this is impossible. And we know that I'm a really slow drawer. So um, this, like I said, this video was four plus hours and I've managed to get it down to like 46 minutes. So yay. And uh, I will play some music here on and off <coughs> as we go uh, in the areas that I don't feel need any explanation. And, and if I, you know, stop chattering, <laughs> we'll just see what happens, guys. So I'm very excited to start our new project. Um, and again, I am overlapping these sections and drawing behind. Um, I want to apologize to you guys for this video being out so late. I know I promised it to you um, Monday or Tuesday, and I just, uh, Mari's school starts uh, this week instead of next week, like I thought, and so we have been busily uh, making sure that he has got all of the materials and, and uh, that our technology setup is all set to work with his tablet and uh, all of the things that he's going to need to start school on Thursday. So, <laughs> yes, I've been running around this week and I did not get the videos done in time and I hope you guys will understand. I'm going to go ahead and publish this as soon as I get it uploaded so that you guys can be drawing on it and then uh, we will see what I would like to do is live stream uh, the first session um, that I'm going to do in the new format. And what we're going to do first is we're going to go over some of the less, well, hmm, I think the first video I'm going to do is uh, just a drawing meditation video where you guys draw along with me and we chill out and uh, do something very simple. And um, I think that might be a really lovely time together where you guys could um, ask questions or have comments and we wouldn't be rushed and that would be lovely. So um, I'm considering a live stream. So if you get a notification, if you don't get notifications, make sure that you are subscribed and that you have hit the notification bell so that when I decide to um, do the live stream, I'll give you try to give you a day's notice or two. And uh, since we're publishing so frequently, at uh, least frequently for me, uh, we're going to see how it goes. What we're going to do is we're going to do less Zia creation, which is the ones that are so time intensive, which is stuff like we're doing right now. And we're going to point things more back to a traditional Zentangle um, approach with a sort of um, an approach that will be for beginners. And yet I'm going to do some challenges within that for my more uh, experienced tanglers of different ways to try things that maybe you are already familiar with. And uh, so uh, we are going to be doing the first few lessons from the Zentangle Primer. And I know that um, there are several people that have done that uh, lesson online and uh, that's cool. I'm going to do my own version of it. And uh, so we're going to talk about things like how to merge our tangles and um, how to take basic tangles like crescent moon and make them more dynamic. So um, those are the kinds of things we will be talking about here soon. But I think first, at least once, I want to try just a chill out meditational type of a thing where there doesn't need to be a lot of editing, there, you know, unless the kid is going to be a terror that day. Uh, they're just, just some quiet drawing time where we can chill out and enjoy each other. And I'd love to do that live so that you guys can chat back with me. And um, I know that is hard for me. It's hard for me to do anything and try to chat uh, um, when there's a live stream. Um, it's hard to be in chat, but of course my chat's not going to be that crowded and it won't go that fast, so we'll be all right. I know a few of you guys will show up. 
you proud. There we go. Now we can see what I'm doing. I'm also giving line weight to that to that um, initial point where the lines come together. I'm sort of rounding that um, out and putting a little extra ink there to sort of show that that's going um, going to be going beneath what is already there. And this is very intuitive. Adding these little uh, tendrils is very intuitive. You just have to do it the way that you think you want to. Okay, so this is where I'm at now. <clears throat> Hopefully I'm gonna zoom back in, there we go. I have to get that, you know, that impression of it from far out first and then we can keep going. This is time consuming, but it's also very zenful. You know, there's not much that has to go on in your brain except figuring out where to put the next tendril and filling it in. So I want you guys to purposefully zen out. <laughs> if you are experienced tanglers, I want you to try to do what I'm doing here, which is overlapping them in some way. Change up the directions if you're comfortable doing that. And if you're not, just keep doing them straight out. There's nothing wrong with that. If you don't have a good spot, just draw it in wherever you want to and, you know, it'll work. It will work. I am purposefully changing directions with my tendrils each time I do one, mostly, <laughs> sometimes, um, just to give it a little bit of activity and, and movement in the, in the background. This is an extremely organic uh, project, and so we needed something uh, like this that w in the background that would be simple and yet uh, still have a lot of movement with it, and I think this is the perfect pattern for that. Now, any shoe, uh, the pattern is much more curvy and overlappy than this, if I could just murder those words. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, again, we're adapting it to what we want it to be. And so you can put as many of these or as few of these in as you want. And when you feel like you're finished, just stop. And I will be going back and forth to spots and adding and, and doing extra things. It's just going to really depend on when I feel it's uh, finished. When I feel enough is enough, then that'll be enough. I want to try to keep each section sort of consistent with what's going on in the others. Here I'm just rounding a little bit. I know that when, uh, as I draw this, I'm aware that when I when I go over this with colored pencil, the ink, the inking is mostly going to be in the background. Uh, it's going to be very subtle, and I'm going to be doing all of my uh, work with colored pencils. Uh, so I want this sort of uh, invisible line work here to be invisible. But again, if you use a brown zero one, you're still going to get something really cool. Um, in that in that instance, if you're using a brown pencil or some other color, um, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you've got clean lines between your petals, good dark lines between your petals and uh, your uh, line work for the background. There we go. Starting to look good. So what do you guys think about this background? Do you think it's going to work? Do you think uh, I should have chosen to do something like Zinger or uh, Fescue or whatever? I just think this works really well. And this was always sort of what I had in, in the back of my mind to do here. I just, um, you know, I really need time to sort of think those things through. And I encourage you guys, when you're doing your own projects out there, to give yourself, you know, the time you need to be creative. Sometimes it takes me days to figure out what I'm going to do. But once I finally get there, you know, I'm very pleased with what I'm doing. So, you know, make sure that you give yourself time to look at it, you know. I am always taking this out and looking at it. What can I add? What can I do differently? What can I, 
what can I do to enhance this more? What, what would make this even cooler than it is? So that's the kind of thing that, that I have been doing since we started this. You know, I'll get it out and I'll look at it while I'm doing my editing. And I'll think, well, you know, what would be cool to do next? You know, what should, what should we talk about next? And even as I finished this video uh, and looked at it more, I still found things that I really needed to do um, more of. Um, shading with my violet blue would be one thing that I didn't do as much of as I should have. So uh, let's look at these here. So this is it with uh, the line work. Okay, the little any shoes. Now I'm going to take my brown PN and I'm going to go over this really quickly just to provide more uh, definition between the, the uh, lines and the petals. Also, um, each time I have touched these lines with my gray pen as I drew in the um, background, uh, that uh, puts a little gray mark in this um, petal line. And so I want to keep that, like I told you guys, dark and uh, defined. And even though I'm going to shade this later, we still want those nice clean lines. <laughs> I wish mine were cleaner. It's going to be okay, though. Still, as, as many mistakes, and I'll call them mistakes, as I feel I have made here. Whoops, there's another one. I still feel like this overall project turned out so beautifully, and I'm very pleased. I mean, there are things that I wish I could do differently now, but again, as I've told some of you in comments, it's, it's part of our artistic journey. This project that has taken us a month um, to do is part of the artistic journey. It's part of our learning process, and each time we create especially large works like this, and really spend a lot of time and effort on them and making them just so, we have something that we have learned and we have something we can be proud of and we should be proud of. And somebody said their husband thought they should um, frame theirs. I say, absolutely, I have a frame that I'm hoping this will fit in. And so, um, yeah. So I'm trying to see if, uh, enhancing the line work would help a little bit on this petal. That's one thing that I wish I could do differently, but hey, it is what it is. So here I'm enhancing the shading around the center portion with my blue violet pencil. I'm also adding some blue violet to the bottom of these uh, sections here on the, on the middle part. Oops, and there my tooth is coming up. The tooth of the paper is the surface, as y'all know. And so now I'm really going to get after uh, some shading color, some defining stuff. Okay, let's see where we're going next. Now I'm not too worried about some of the sloppiness of these lines because uh, I will be doing this in layers, coming in with my jelly roll and fixing those spots. And then I will, um, you know, go back over them with the ink pen at any spots where I messed up. So it's a, it's a layering process as all Zias are. It's, it, at least for me, it's not possible to, <laughs> it's not possible to uh, do, th do things one time and just leave it. I'm always finding ways to um, enhance. So I'm going through here the whole thing with my green pencil first. This is the true green pencil in the Prismacolor Vera Thin line. And uh, remember, the reason that I chose these is not that I think these are just the best pencil out there. It's that they work really well for Zia Works because they are more translucent, uh, less opaque than regular colored pencils. And I certainly could have come in here with regular colored pencils, but I like the way these are able to softly blend. And I just thought they would work really well with our background. Remember, we did the background, or at least I did the background with Derwent Ink Tints. Um, I have been trying out some other water-based uh, mediums for backgrounds and have just not been not been excited about, you know, I'm spoiled. The, the Ink Tints really spoils me, so um, yeah. 
when you can afford it, I would definitely, definitely say they're worth it. They're better than any anything else that I have ever used. And uh, you can use them for backgrounds as I normally use them, but you can also use them for coloring if you are good at detail work and that kind of thing. They work really well for that. But anyway, and t together with these Verithins, this, this is working out beautifully for me. Now I'm going to try to put some music in the background, but when I do voiceovers, it tends to mute the background um, music a lot. So uh, I'm not sure how that's going to turn out, but we'll see what we can do. I almost uh, did this live and invited you guys to come and color with me, but um, I figured nobody would be prepared for that if I didn't have the first part up and I didn't and blah, blah, blah. So here we are all together. <laughs> this is the light cerulean blue that I'm using now, and I'm going from section to section with the, with, um, the colors and just picking out any spots that would work for that color. And again, I'm only adding it at the base and the tip. I'm not putting this color in the middle. I'm not coloring any of these in the middle. They may have some color from the background in the middle, but I'm not adding anything. This is definitely a labor of love. Quite time consuming. But I think once it's finished, it's going to be awesome. I am quite pleased with it. This section where, that first section where I've already defined everything and used my uh, Prismacolor, my um, blue-violet to define it all is really lovely. And so this is, it's just going to take time. I'm coming in here again with my Parma Violet. Now I'm going to go around to all of the purple spots on this and color the tips and the base and leave the centers blank because I'm going to come through here later uh, with my white Prismacolor uh, Premier pencil, not a Verithin, but a Premier because I want that white op opaque cover everything white and it's going to soften the colors and blend everything beautifully. And you can see my paper stump uh, does a great job blending these very thins. And I've chosen not to use blending solution here because I, I don't want the colors to be too harsh. I want them to be uh, this floaty sort of pastel just you know, I like this. I like the way they look. This is the peacock blue. This is the perfect thing for going around each of these colors. The greens work, the blues work, and it works with the purple. So um, I'm pretty pleased with that. I will probably use that to define some of these lighter blue spots. Okay, so that was my... Um, that was my Faber-Castell Polychromos white to begin with, and then my white charcoal. And now I'm using my white Prismacolor. And you can see that for this, it works really well because the background is rough from, uh, from the ink tints and from the surface of the paper. So I'm going in and just blending this out in the middle of each of these, and isn't that pretty? So that's where we are now, okay? Moving onward. So you guys, I have noticed, um, are not leaving me as many comments, and I don't blame you because I'm not answering them very often, and so I don't blame you for that. But I would really like to know um, if you guys liked this. A lot of you have said you did, but I haven't heard from many of you. So I'm, I'm figuring it's not your favorite thing. And that's cool. That is absolutely cool. Um, you know, uh, we were doing a lot of, we were having a lot of Zia questions. And so this has been a huge Zia project. And it's been fun but I'm sure not everybody participated. So I want to go back to a more um, informal, sort of um, relaxed, chill out sort of a 
version of this. And if I can find a format that is is easy enough for me to handle, then we'll do daily again. If not, then it'll be every other day like it has been, except for the last week, which has been sort of different. And I do beg your patience as we get started with school, things at home are gonna be really tense and um, the kiddo is gonna have trouble and uh, we are going to have a lot of conflict. And so um, I just am gonna need your patience if I miss a video or something like I did in the last day. Uh, I'm just really gonna need your patience. So um, yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it, thank you. I know I know most of you are going to be are going to be okay with that. I do apologize for the for the interruption in our schedule, but little guy has to come first and uh, I know everybody knows that and understands it. All right. Yeah, I love that. I love that peacock blue on top of these other colors. I also think it makes a uh, good shading. Of course I said that already didn't I? I'm repeating myself. Is it time for music? Oof. It's making me dizzy. And you can see that all of those lines we put in, they're still visible, but <laughs> if you got one off, nobody is going to care or see or notice, right? So let's, as my, as my Sean used to say, let's not sweat the small stuff. Let's just uh, focus on what we need to make everything as beautiful and dynamic as possible, and then we'll let the rest go.
Okay, after that soothing piece of music, that was Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, um, we are going to listen to Simba Bark, and I'm going to be using my black uh, polychromos, black polychromos by Faber-Castell, and uh, I'm just going to put a little darkness around the edges of this, uh, particularly uh, on these ribbon forms on the internal uh, curve. Uh, but also around the outside to lift it up off the background just a tiny bit. Um, it's going to be pretty subtle, and uh, again, I can blend this out uh, with this tortillon or this um, paper stump that I'm using. Now, one of the things that I forgot to do on camera was to come through with my blue violet and put a bit of shadow on the very top of each of these that curve. That will give it um, a bit of um, a bit of that look of curving. If we would shadow that a bit, so that's something that I didn't do on camera that I want to do. Um, now, <laughs> actually, I want to get it out and do it right now while I'm thinking about it. But uh, other than that, I'm just putting this bit of darkness around the edges all the way around, uh, even on the tips. I don't know if this is right or wrong. Please don't learn shading from me. This is just what I'm doing. And I'm going to leave it off. Um, I'm going to stop the shadow once I get to the end of my embellishing uh, my any shoe. Um, that reminds me of something that Annie Oaken said in a live stream uh, not too long ago in a live uh, Zoom class. She said someone asked about putting a shadow on the background and what, what her very wise words were. She didn't want to put a shadow on the background, and that was because she didn't want the background to become flat. And uh, that that was very uh, a very visual um, idea for me that, that I frequently shy away from shading on the background, but I didn't know why. And she's absolutely right. If you shade on the background, that makes the background become flat. So now I am dressing up that wide band of brown that I put around my gym, and I'm just dotting in some uh, Jelly Roll. I'm using my Jelly Roll 10. And I'm, I finally have decided that I'm going to go ahead and uh, white in the banded areas around the outside of each one of these. Now, um, I will tell you that uh, there are spots that I didn't do a very good job. And this is one of those layering things. You come back through then with your ink pen and sort of work back and forth. And I finally decided to go ahead and and uh, ink over these with Jelly Roll because I sort of wanted to, to enhance further that feeling of separation between the background and the foreground. And the foreground would be the flower, of course, and the background would be the any shoe. And I do think that brightens up... Um, what we're doing quite a bit and again I'll be touching this up back and forth that one had already been touched up so it didn't need as much except for that little snafu there and this looks much faster and much less precise than it actually was um, my regular watchers know that I am um, sort of bad with the jelly roll and the inking. So, um, you know, finishing up a project like this, this is very much going back and forth and trying to get something that's just not going to stand out horribly. I keep seeing spots that I have not um, blended. So I'm gonna keep coming back through here and um, sort of blending those out a little bit. Uh, I have yet to add my jelly roll, or my um, white Prismacolor on all of these parts, so we'll still be blending some of these out as we go. And like I said, I did not get in here with my blue-violet 
uh, and I really still need to do that. And I apologize that this is out of frame. I am just touching up these brown outside lines. Oops. And uh, crisping them up, as I, as I like to call it. I like for the lines to be nice and dark, clean, if I can make them that way. Which is, you know, hit or miss with me. Hit or miss. All right, so I'm just outlining right now, and I apologize that I did not get all of that on camera. But you're not missing much. But you can see all of the little uh, gray spots can really encroach on that line. And then, of course, the jelly roll also. So here I am with my white Prismacolor, and I'm going to go through here after I have zoomed out a little bit, and add that white uh, blended highlight in the middle, in the center of each one of these elements. Just going to take my time, although it doesn't look like it, I'm taking my time, and just smoothing in that white everywhere on the middles. And I do know I forgot that section. Hopefully I will get back to it. This will help uh, soften some of those background elements where um, I had some harsher color breaks uh, with the ink tints. I totally did forget that section. Hopefully I went back and got it at some point. If not, I'll be getting it out and working it now. And then on this, I am just adding a little bit of a highlight with the sharp edge of this Prismacolor, okay? And this is where I'm at. This is the finished product. I want to thank you guys so much for doing this project with me. Uh, finish up, embellish your own, make it your own. And I can't wait to see what you've done on Instagram. Please post and don't forget to tag me at the Tireless Tangler. All right, guys, I'm going to see you real soon with our next video.